Every community can celebrate its heritage, historical, cultural, natural, agricultural, and industrial. In this next session, America in Bloom judge Rod Barnes from Edmonston, Maryland, will teach us why preserving and protecting our community's heritage is so important. From fun festivals to somber memorials, from educational exhibits to funky fun, your community's heritage is worth identifying and celebrating. Hi, Rod. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Linda. It's great seeing you today. I really appreciate the invitation to be a presenter at the American Bloom Symposium in the Sky. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about celebrating your community's heritage in a fun, funky, fabulous kind of way. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about celebrating heritage. Celebrating heritage can be fun, funky, and fabulous. It can be educational with interpretive displays, wonderful museums, big and small, in adaptive reused buildings in communities, whether it's a railroad machine building or a storefront downtown. Museums can serve great purpose in celebrating heritage in a community. It can be a tourism generator, as you'll hear about some of the wonderful fun activities that happen across the country in our American and Bloom communities. Or it can be a wonderful youth involved community activity as we get youth excited about participating in heritage events throughout their communities. And of course, celebrating heritage can be fun, funky, and fabulous through the use of parades, festivals, and just by celebrating cultural heritage in many ways. It's certainly a pride of place, and it certainly can be designed to preserve the history of your community through national register designations and many other programs. And finally, it can be a great way to recruit volunteers to help you in your community in all areas. So, it is a fun event, and nothing's more fun than Mardi Gras. Did you know that Mardi Gras actually originated in Mobile, Alabama in 1703? Mobile celebrates two weeks worth of parades during Mardi Gras season, throwing out all kinds of goodies to big crowds lined along the downtown streets. It's a celebration of mask balls, heritage, mystic societies, and wonderful beginnings back in 1703. But festivals can be fun with just being a one day event. Castle Rock, Washington, an AIB community, celebrates a festival of lights each year. Over 7,000 people flock to the community to see wonderful, good old fashioned hometown Christmas with community spirit and fun for all kids and adults. Nancy Chenault, one of the great volunteers in Castle Rock, describes it as, you can call it a Hallmark movie. The only thing missing sometimes is the snow. Or what about a shrimp festival? Many times celebrating heritage is surrounded around some kind of item, whether it be food or an actual cultural heritage of that community. In Gulf Shores, Alabama, they host an annual shrimp festival each year that draws approximately 250,000 plus year people. For 49 years, over 80 volunteers help put together the festival that showcases how to use a shrimp in anything that there is to eat, drink, or consume. They've included a, a wonderful poster contest as part of the heritage of the Gulf. That poster contest is open to artists each year to win the, um, have the winning poster for the event. What about a lilac festival in Mackinac Island? Celebrating heritage many times in our communities is all about celebrating the wonderful flowers and beauty of nature. The lilac festival in Mackinac Island is 
73 years strong. It's a 10 day festival, hosts the Michigan Cornhole Tournament. It's the only place where floats are drawn completely by horses as no motor vehicles are allowed on the island. It is also a local legacy event designated by the American Folk Life Center, the Library in Congress. That program initiated in 2000 as part of the Library of Congress's bicentennial celebration listed projects from all 50 states for that designation of local legacy. And the local legacy event is defined as a traditional activity, event or area of creativity that merits being documented for future generations. For a map of the US and a listing of projects, check out the website listed on the PowerPoint presentation today. Well, celebrating heritage is certainly fun in South Carolina. As Greenwood, South Carolina and AIB community hosts the South Carolina Festival of Flowers each year. This festival of flowers draws thousands of people to the community each year and showcases 44 live topiaries throughout the, the downtown area. It showcases Greenwood as a destination for flowers, families, and fun. Celebrating heritage is certainly fun in Greenwood, South Carolina. Its origins date back to the George W. Park Seed Company's annual trials and it expanded and grew from that and for the last 54 years has been a highlight of the season in South Carolina. What about a fun chocolate festival? I've heard stories about the mayor, former mayor in Lewisburg, West Virginia, dressing up and participating in the many events they have in Lewisburg. Well, what better event to have than a chocolate festival as they celebrate everything chocolate in in their community. Music, shopping, good times, celebrity chefs demonstrating exciting desserts and dishes, a chocolate chase fun race, and all things chocolate bake off and a chocolate themed children activities make celebrating heritage in Lewisburg, West Virginia, a fun, fun, fun event. So in the American Bloom program, we have criteria that we look at each year, each year when we visit your community. So leadership and policy leads the way for celebrating heritage. What historic preservation ordinances are there for residential and commercial districts? What incentives to promote preservation through tax credits, waiving permit fees or rebates? Or how about just creating a historic preservation board, reviewing the wonderful historic attributes each community shares? Or an architectural review board to make sure that when somebody renovates a building, it meets the, the criteria of the other buildings around it. And finally, how about developing a historical society made up of volunteers that can help promote heritage in a big way in any community? So first of all, ordinances protect. The ordinances protect the character and history and cultural resources of an area in a particular community. Or how about providing historic tax credits. Many states and the federal government provide credits to help restore buildings. As is seen in this picture, a $1 million project costs the, the applicant $650,000 after the tax credits were applied. Or in Junction City, Kansas, an AIB community where the C.L. Hoover Opera House built in 1898 was restored to a performing arts center state-of-the-art using tax credits and donations. What about an architectural review board? It's just one of the tools that you can help you celebrate heritage in your community. Volunteers can provide wonderful direction and guidelines to restoring homes and buildings throughout your communities. Or the great society volunteers that we have across the U.S. Many times historical societies are made up of volunteers in the community that have a shared common interest of preserving the heritage and culture for that particular community. They might be housed in a former uh, railroad depot, maybe downtown, or even in the town hall. 
but it, all of them have one thing in common, a dedicated goal of celebrating the heritage in their particular community. So the next criteria that judges typically look at are the plan of action. What policies are communicated from the federal, state, and local governments? How is the National Register of Historic Places program used? What preservation is happening with natural and our agricultural areas? Are you developing oral histories, archives, and artifacts being preserved? And what about education and involving youth in your community? Celebrating heritage is a fabulous way to restore and maintain historical buildings. Look at this building in, in Lewisburg, West Virginia, one of the, only a few in the United States that is designed as a Carnegie Hall for performing arts, summer camps, and all kinds of educational programs exist today. Or in Escondido, California, an AIB community where preserving homes is an important feature of celebrating their heritage. This picture is a great example of a period home developed and restored to celebrate the rich history and heritage of Escondido, California. Our new town square, Pennsylvania, another AIB community where they preserved one of the oldest buildings in the area. Or Lexington, Kentucky, where a historic home showcases the example of the great history and development of that community over time. You can even celebrate heritage by preserving buildings, this building in Racine, Wisconsin, another AIB community, where it has been adapted for reuse today in a functional manner that provides great, great resources and assets to the community of Racine. How about this beautiful building in Coshocton, Ohio? What great example of preserving and maintaining heritage in that particular community. There's interpretive signs, there's landscaping, there's great monuments. Wonderful example of all of the areas of celebrating heritage. Celebrating heritage can also be natural. Estes Park, Colorado, wonderful American in Bloom community has many God-given gifts and those, they take advantage of nature. They celebrate heritage in a big way with all of the wonderful assets and attributes they have surrounding them with the mountains and the beautiful, beautiful scenery that develops through the seasons each year. Or what about, I'm from Kansas. So Kansas is a great place for me in my heart. And it's not all prairie and it's not all all flat wheat country. In the Northeast section of the state, one of the last regions in the country of an example of a tall grass prairie exists today. The prairie has rolling hills with grazing cattle and sunflowers and, and grass growing uh, wildly. It's an exciting celebration of heritage each year when the symphony comes up to visit and thousands of people descend on the Flint Hills to hear the symphony on the prairie. So celebrating heritage can also happen through agricultural and natural areas. Look at this example of an American farm converted into a pumpkin patch event for families to come each year, select just the right pumpkin for carving. What better way to celebrate heritage than doing it on an American farm in a barn that was restored and maintained. Or in West Chicago, Illinois, an American in Bloom community where Klein Creek Working Farm has animals, gardens, a house, and examples of what living on the farm was like growing up over the years. Or in Bruton, Alabama, where they host the annual Blueberry Festival, learning about everything you can do with blueberries. 
blueberry crunch, blueberry cake, blueberry ice cream, whatever it might be, Bruton, Alabama is happy to celebrate agriculture through their annual blueberry festival. Hawthorne Woods is an amazing community in Illinois. Their town hall is in a former dairy barn. The barn was restored to be able to capture many of the wonderful historical attributes with pictures and artifacts on the walls and completely functioning now as the town hall and police department for the village of Hawthorne Woods. A great example of celebrating heritage in an area that was once a great farming community. So what are some tools about celebrating heritage that you can do that are easy and fun? Oral histories and artifacts. Oral histories are as simple as just recording interviews with your residents or your business community to talk about how your community has changed over a period of time. And artifacts can be small artifacts that are captured and placed in display cases in town hall in buildings downtown, public buildings, or private. The artifacts are part of telling the story of celebrating heritage in that particular community. Or what about youth? We talk about getting volunteers and getting people involved. We need youth to be involved. So what better way than through celebrating heritage? Many youth participate in, in visiting interpretive displays as field trips for school, or in Minnesota, they operate an internship at the Minnesota Historical Society or in Detroit where they have a youth advisory council that learns, leads and creates, helping the Historical Society of Detroit provide the programs that are, are going to be well accepted by families and the community. So this talk just briefly about celebrating heritage in a funky, offbeat, innovative way. Look at this sign, welcome to the center of the USA. I believe that's someplace in Kansas, maybe even um, in Missouri, but wherever that place may be, they obviously are trying to draw up on the heritage of being the only, only designated place in America that they can say that. Maybe they um, people stop just to get a picture or maybe let, they go on to Lebanon to pick up their souvenirs but that community is certainly celebrating heritage in a funky kind of way. Or in Kit Carson Park, Escondido, California, innovative sea serpents by a French artist uh, provide a wonderful playground for families and children to spend hours having fun. Or as a kid in Kansas growing up and crossing the state, we couldn't miss the signs for the largest ball of twine in Cocker City, Kansas. This Cocker City is celebrating that great, great farming history in that particular area. And they're doing it in a funky kind of way. So you can go have your picture taken by the largest ball of twine. Or not so much funky as fun, fabulous, is the drive-in theater in Carthage, Missouri, an AIB community. A blast from the past. Obviously, what greater fun can it be than to go spend an evening at the drive-in theater enjoying popcorn and hot dogs as you watch a movie on the big screen? Or what about celebrating heritage in a funky, crazy kind of way by touring the Kentucky Bourbon Trail? My husband convinced me that it would be an exciting event to do on the way to Kansas and on the way back. We explored all of the wonderful historical distillery sites and got to sample a few treats along the way. And certainly he took his share of bourbon home for consumption at a later time. A funky way to celebrate the heritage of a great state of Kentucky by developing the concept of a bourbon trail. Or this go back to Bruton, Alabama and this wonderful picture of a facade of their downtown theater at one time. It's a very deceiving picture, but it's a great welcome to the wonderful community of Bruton, Alabama, celebrating their heritage in a big way 
and a big investment in welcoming folks to visit their community. Or this, a pocket museum in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, part of Forest County, Mississippi. The pocket museum is maybe one of the littlest museums in the, in the country as its uh, location is in an alley in downtown Hattiesburg. Exhibits change regularly. People can stop by and take a look at them. Street vendors set up and perform. It's certainly a funky kind of way to explore and look at heritage of that particular community. So you can commemorate heritage in lots of ways through signage, as we talked about the museums and interpretive displays, through cemeteries, monuments or plaques, brochures or self-guided tours, parades, festivals, events, programs can all commemorate a community's heritage. So signage can celebrate heritage. You see it everywhere as you see wonderful historical signs located. The one Lincoln Douglas debate is in Ottawa, Illinois, an American and Bloom community. Or look at the Newtown Township sign uh, established in 1681. Or there is a National Register Historic Places sign that can be placed at a building that is added to the register. Or did you know there is a National Heritage Area in many locations across the country? Signage can tell the story of what celebrating heritage is all about. Or in Washington, Missouri, heritage comes alive with this restored fire truck. Ceremonial for sure, but certainly a great example of celebrating the wonderful history in that community. Or in Springfield, Ohio, a replica of a wonderful building that houses the museum collection for that particular community. And did you know that in a funky kind of way, cemeteries are a great place to explore and enjoy. Park-like settings attract many people to look at the wonderful architecture and great display of monuments that capture people's imagination in a cemetery. Or what about monuments? You can celebrate heritage easily through any kind of monument. This great monument in Lexington, Kentucky, an AIB community, celebrates Secretariat, the great racehorse. <coughs> or this monument to Frederick Douglass in Central Park in New York City. So what about celebrating heritage through cultural activities and events? Whether it be Hispanic heritage, a pride event, a Juneteenth event, celebrating African-American roots, Asian Pacific or Jewish heritage celebrations. We, we love to celebrate our heritage through cultural activities and events. No better example of that than Holland, Michigan with their annual Tulip Time Festival. Six million tulips over eight days. You can celebrate the wonderful tulips, but it also celebrates the great Dutch heritage and the community of Holland. This event was proclaimed the nation's best flower festival and has been going on for 92 years. Or in the small town of Edmonston, Maryland, where I'm from, um, you can enjoy Mexican Independence Day each year in September as the locals gather to celebrate a great event in their cultural history. Or the Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Village in Alberta, Canada, a living example to the culture that developed in that particular location. And what better fun than celebrating in the fabulous downtown Eureka Springs, Arkansas, an AIB community. Every trip to Eureka Springs brings a different approach to nature, to fun, to being fabulous, and certainly in some cases being funky. In Rapid City, South Dakota, you can do a presidential walk and and meet each of the presidents as you walk through the downtown, celebrating the heritage of each one of those individuals. 
or if you really want to get unique and take advantage of some opportunities in heritage, jump on the trolley in St. Charles, Illinois, or get on the boat in St. Michael's, Maryland, and tour the Chesapeake Bay. Both of these are ways that we in our small communities celebrate heritage. We've taken time to explore heritage in a fun, funky, and fabulous way. I hope that I've given you examples that can help you as you develop along the, the, your road to being a America in Bloom community that celebrates heritage in a fun, funky, and fabulous way. Thank you very much.